My name is Jason and this is just watches. Okay, Timex continues to roll out really fun watches and this one is no exception. This is their Timex Waterbury Dive 41, which is a compressor style quartz diver. Now this one seems to have flown a bit under the radar, but I just saw that they released two new colorways, which also look great. However, before I get to the review, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. At the time of this recording, this watch is available on the Timex website for a price of $199 on the bracelet or $179 on a strap. However, with Timex, there are often sales, so I do recommend waiting for 15, 20, or 25% off offers. The case is 41 millimeters in diameter. It's about 47 and a half millimeters lug to lug. It's quite thin, only about 10.5 millimeters, and then has a 20 millimeter lug with opening. Now, the case is a nice combination of brushed and high polished surfaces. The lugs have a nice high polished chamfer, while the rest of the top and sides of the mid case are brushed. The high polished bezel and then twin crowns add a bit of flash and fun, especially with the upper crown being green, which is used to rotate that inner bezel. Overall, the watch is quite light and I found it comfortable on the stock bracelet. The stock bracelet starts at 20 millimeters. The hollow end links have almost no play between the bracelet and the head of the watch. The articulation of the bracelet across the back of the case is good, and then between the links is excellent, two factors which help with the overall comfort of the bracelet. The links are quite nice and I like the style of them. The clasp is signed with Timex, but the scissor is just pressed metal. Sizing is accomplished with standard split pins, but I will note this was a very difficult bracelet to size due to the fact that all of the individual pieces of the links articulate. Overall, the bracelet is nice for the price, but I do worry that there are no micro positions or half lengths, so getting the right fit on the bracelet might be hit or miss. The screw and case back helps provide 100 meters of water resistance. It has the globe with Timex and then information about the watch around the edge. It is a high polished case back, which I'm not a huge fan of because they do tend to pick up scratches quite easily. That said, it is on the back of the watch and you won't really see this all the time. Now, I didn't see what movement is used specified either on the Timex website or the case back, but if I had to guess, it's probably accurate to plus or minus 20 seconds a month, and then probably has an approximate battery life of three years. The ticking is audible, but not very loud, and then finally, the second hand registration on this particular piece, at least, is very good. So there are two crowns, and they're both signed, and both screw down. The bottom crown is used to set the time, and is signed with the Waterbury logo, and then the top one is signed with a sort of crosshatch pattern, and then is green, and then this top crown operates the inner rotating bezel. I love the splash of color on the upper crown. The knurling on both crowns is good, they're easy to grip, and then the threading and unthreading action is smooth. The crystal is a touch proud of the bezel and is completely flat. While Timex does use sapphire crystals on some of their watches, unfortunately this one is only mineral glass. The inner rotating bezel has a pleasing click as it is rotated. There is a large triangle at 12, and then Arabic numerals for the 15, 30, and 45. The remaining hours and minutes are displayed with dashes, with somewhat larger dashes from 12 to 15. The dial is flat black and also has dashes around the edge for the minutes. The indices are applied and have some nice angles that catch light, and then they are also loomed. There is a 12 applied at the 12 o'clock position with a smaller index. Unfortunately, the 12 on this one is a bit off. The 1 is slightly higher than the 2. Timex is then printed at 12, with the Waterbury logo, the Waterbury, and depth rating at 6. The dial is nicely balanced overall and I like that they didn't use a date on this one. The hour and minute hands are partially skeletonized and then finished in high polish. The minute hand is plenty long and has a large loomed arrow at the end, and then the hour hand is also loomed. I love skeletonized hands, especially when they overlap. We also have a very fun second hand that is green to match the upper crown and has a loomed lollipop towards the tip and the Waterbury W as a counterbalance. The counterbalance is possibly a bit too much, but overall this is kind of a playful and fun watch, so I don't mind it. The loom is just okay. Okay. It isn't super bright or responsive, and while it lags behind the other three watches shown here, you can still make out the time. So here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. I think it looks great on the bracelet and as a nice size overall. I was able to find a good size for the bracelet and then it's very comfortable to wear on that bracelet. For pros and cons, let's start with the pros. First, I love to see the 100 meters of water resistance and the fact that both crowns are screwed down. You can get adventurous with this watch and not have to worry about water. Second, the inner rotating bezel 
puzzle is really well executed and turns with satisfying clicks in both directions. This is especially impressive at this price point. Third, I love that they used green for the upper crown and the second hand, which adds a splash of color and fun to this watch. Last, I found the bracelet was good for the price, assuming you can find the right size. As for cons, not having a half link or micro positions on the clasp makes me worry that the bracelet won't work for everyone. Second, I really wish they had charged just a bit more and added a sapphire crystal. I think that in combination with the water resistance and screw down crowns would have really improved the overall package for me. Third, and it might have just been mine, but the slight misalignment between the one and the two is a bit disappointing, especially at the very center top of the dial there. As for comparables, if you want a quartz diver for an unbeatable price, you can always go for an Invicta Quartz Pro Diver. These can usually be found for around $60. For about the same price as this watch, you could get a Citizen Echo Drive Diver. I have a review of one of those on my channel that I'll link to now. For a bit more, Skurfa makes quartz divers for incredible value, which will also include a sapphire crystal. I have not had the chance to review one yet, but I have heard awesome things about them. So there you have it, the Waterbury Dive 41 millimeters from Timex. What do you think about this watch? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you've been watching Just Watches.